Hello, hello, Tony here, back on my channel once more, this time on a Wednesday slot. Now the last time I popped up on a Wednesday slot, it was to open up a box of Phantom Rage. And true to trying to maintain some form of an organized release schedule, today we're going to be opening up another box, this time of the newest set to come out of this game, in Blazing Vortex. Now before I open up said box, I might as well give a quick overview of what to expect coming out of it. And this answer might differ depending on what kind of player you are. If you're a meta focused player, I'm going to give it to you straight. This set does not have a lot that can shake up the meta. Outside of two powerful staple cards which may see play immediately, the rest of the cards in this set don't have the power or consistency enough that they can directly inject themselves in a meta in a way that they can challenge Drytrons or Virtual Worlds in a meaningful way. And as such, you probably won't find a lot of change in the meta coming out with this set. However, if you're a general deck builder like me, this set is a cornucopia of new opportunities. With new archetypes such as War Rocks, Arm Dragons, and S Force, as well as legacy support for things such as Ancient Warriors, this set breathes life into a lot of new avenues of play, and that's something that gets me very excited. One of the biggest challenges as a deck building Yugi tuber is sometimes just trying to find relevant content every week to release. You may have noticed that every once in a while, in between sets, some of my deck profiles get a little weird. From things such as Super Quanos or Attic Nister, there are times where I'm just struggling to find something interesting to build every week for you guys. Obviously, I could release something basic such as Virtual World, but those decks usually end up just being three of everything. So a lot of times I try to look back into older decks and archetypes to see if there's anything interesting I can build. The problem with that is that most of these decks have reached such a technical dead end due to the lack of new support that there really isn't anything that I can add to the deck that would make it any better. And I don't want to release a deck profile that is just a cookie cutter of something that already exists. I want to make content that I think gets people talking or discussing or realizing there is potential in this deck in a different way. And most of the time that just isn't possible. Luckily for it, however, with sets like these, there is always that opportunity. With new archetypes comes new deck building, with new support comes new ways to build decks, and that itself makes things very interesting. Anyway, I've drawn enough with this explanation. Without a further ado, let's get into the box opening. Alright, popping off this plastic here. Hopefully this shouldn't be too hard. So before we continue, I think there's a few things I think everyone knows about this set. First off, the set is somewhat mapped, as in if you get a secret on one side, the other side will be guaranteed a secret as well. Furthermore, given the way that the set is designed, you're always guaranteed probably around four ultra rares, two secret rares, and then a bunch of supers. Thing to look out for here is obviously the new pot card, but ultimately the goal is to just get a few cards from each archetype to know what we're going to build next. Anyway, let's get into it. Right. Oh man, I'm excited. This set is very interesting, I'd say. I have taken a chance to look through everything, so if I, something comes up that's interesting, I will definitely mention it. Starting off, we have the new uh, Metaphose cards, which is really cool because it's nice that they continue to give Metaphose, probably the most popular Pendulum archetype, a bit more support. Uh, unfortunately, though, the support, at least in my opinion, isn't very good, but we'll, I'll discuss that as I get more cards. Pendulum Encore is another one. We have the new Knight of Armor Dragon, which is the next series in the Paladin series for the armor cards. We have new Ancient Warrior support, which is very interesting as well. We have a Materia Actor, which is the, I guess, the recurring archetype going forward. That's something that we can be known of. We have a Spriggan's card, something else for the Spriggan's archetype. M M Machina Unclasp, Spriggan's Pedor, and a Artfiend Staff of Despair. So far, nothing interesting. Going on to the left side, what we have here is one fairy archer ingnar this is plant support which actually might be very interesting depending on how you want to approach this so this is something definitely that i think i'm gonna build later uh going on from there we have new dogmatica genesis support this is not pretty cool a new pendulum monster the reinforcement of army troops probably the greatest debate of all reprinted cards s force orifice so the s force cards is actually something that's very interesting it is the i guess uh flagship archetype of this set but when I get, if I eventually pull more cards, I'll talk about that as well. We got new Tribrigade support as well, a Synchro Transmission, a Radiant Verlucence, and a Breath of Acclamation. A ritual spell that, for some reason, isn't classified as a ritual spell. Alright, moving on from there. We have another S4 Showdown. 
a Neboy, uh, Dream Mirror Disciple. This is a very cool one because they haven't released the alternative version for this, but the new Dream Mirror support is pretty welcome, actually. Reinforcement of the Army Troops, Linear Equation Cannon. This, uh, this one requires some huge math, so I'll talk about this card one of these days if I ever get, get a chance to play it in something. Tribegate Kit. This is the new Tribegate monster that really does put the deck together in a different way, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in the next uh, set. Ojama Pink, Digital Bug Rim Factor. That one's actually making digital bugs kind of cool another tri brigade rendezvous and a spring the iron dash dragon this is the next i guess albas support but it's weird that this one here actually is the most usable with fallen albas directly so something to keep in mind for the spring and stuff Going on from there, we have a Fable Marcosia for the new Fable support, a Spriggan's Call, another Spriggan's card, a the Giga Thunder, the Steel Star Regulator. Ooh, we have our Seeker Rare right off the bat. This is S Force Bridgehead. So this is the searcher for the S Force deck. Unfortunately, not a very expensive card, but it is welcome if you do want to build S Force. This card lets you search for any S Force monster and then negates attacks for S Force in the same column. Something that's definitely interesting when I, I guess recap things for S-Force. We have Roarock Orpus. This is a really unfortunate archetype that's coming out of this set. We have Roarock Ordeal. We have a Wind Witch Blizzard Bell and a Spriggan's Captain Sargus. So since we know that this is the Seeker, I guess this next one here will be the Seeker. I'm going to put that aside for now and see what else we can get. Okay, start off, we have the Armor Dragon Ritual. We have another Ancient Warrior Saga. We have a Knight of Armor Dragon. The Head of Metaphors Amalgam. We have our Spriggan Ship Explorer. Okay, so this is a good time for me to talk about the Spriggan's archetype. So Spriggan's here is an archetype that generally revolves around, so far at this moment, this card. The way that this card works is that by detaching material, you could target a column on the field and then essentially drop a meteor shell on that zone. Everything adjacent and back and forth of that zone essentially gets nuked by this one card. The only issue is that outside of something like Captain Sargus, there's actually no direct way to exceed into it. The way that you're supposed to exceed summon into this card is by using a card called Golden Sea Gondola, which essentially should summon out any Spriggan's exceeds monster. It's a really cool idea of cheating out Xyz monsters to then just nuke the field. The only issue with the deck at the moment is two things. First off, the deck lacks any play on your opponent's turn, which is something that does become a huge issue when you're in a field that generally pushes out pretty hard. Secondly, the unfortunate part is that this, like the Tri Brigades before, lacks the entirety of its support to do as good as it should. Right now, we still have ways to obviously access the field spell, which essentially allows us to get this out, but without the other support, it's not as good as it should be. And lacking another Xyz monster, it means that you're not pushing out the most. Regardless, though, all the Spriggan's monsters have the unique effect to attach themselves onto your Xyz monster, essentially giving it more ammo to launch, but definitely this is one of those archetypes that I look out for. In the next following set, we are getting a lot more support, some of it tying back to Fallen of Albaz, which makes this card, as well as all the other Spring cards, very good going forward. Getting back into our opening, we have the Virtual Gate Zhang Wu, the newest Virtual Gate card, a Stereo to the Fable Realm, a Fabled Support, we have Fabled Beaver for the Beaver Fun, and the Fabled Treason. There's actually a lot of fair Fabled Support in this archetype, but unfortunately, Fabled's isn't very good for some reason. Anyway, going on from there, what we have next is a Dogmatica Genesis, the Parametaphose Fusion, an S Force Showdown, a Neroy, the Dream Mirror Disciple, a Fabled Andoraith, which is the Fabled Synchro Monster coming out, Tri Brigade Revolution, Synchro Transmission, Radiant Vorlucence, and another Breath of Acclamation. Okay. I think we're almost down the middle here, we're almost halfway through. And so far outside of the bridgehead, nothing of interesting to note. We have the Arm Dragon Lightning, the Spriggan's Rocky, another Spriggan's card, looking good for it, a dual Avatar Ascendance, Heavy Metaphors Amalgam, oh we have our Ultra Rare in Wind Witch Diamond Bell. So this is cool that they made more Wind Witch support, especially since the next Duelist pack is announced to be Wind Archetypes, which probably only amounts to Wind Witch speed roids and maybe like whatever archetype maybe windy plays in the ai series um but this card's not bad uh when it's summoned you burn and when you burn you pop which makes this card doubly effective in a lot of ways something definitely i think is worth looking out for let's focus here anyway going on from there what we have is a breath of acclamation an ojama pink a synchro transmission and an s4 specimen all right let's put that specimen over there moving on from there 
Well, since we got an Ultra on that side, we should get an Ultra on this side. We have the Parametaphose Melcaster. We have Dual Avatar Ascendance. We have another Neroy, a, super, a Linear Equation Cannon, a Virtual Gate 2-2. This is the Virtual Gate monster that is the last of the series, but it's definitely one that isn't being played at the moment. So, okay, so clearly this should have been an Ultra, so now I'm really confused. Uh, anyway, we have an Archmean Staff of Despair, another Spriggan's Blast, a Machine Clasp, and another Spriggan's Pedal. We almost have a Spriggan's lineup going on here. The only issue is that we don't have the Field Spell, which is pretty important. Any on, moving on from there, we have a Spriggan's Branga. We have the S Force Professor Degama. So this is the cool part. Uh, this is actually speaking of Degama here. This is a good time for me to interrupt this to talk about the S Force archetype. So believe it or not, S-Force actually debuted or was mentioned to be debuting all the way back when Cyframes were released with Cyframe Driver. In Cyframe Driver's text, it mentions something known as the Security Force Monsters. And as it turns out, these are those Security Force Monsters. As you can see here, you have Professor Degami here, which obviously looks almost like a Cyframe Monster. But then with something like S-Force Specimen, you actually see those two cards interacting. The idea behind the S-Force archetype is they're essentially a policing archetype, where everything in the column of an S-Force monster gains or is applied a specific effect. For example, Dagami here, any S-Force monster in the same column as another S-Force monster cannot change its positions. And that idea behind these cards here is to essentially mirror a form of arresting someone in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And the archetype is very cool. The only issue with the archetype itself is that they, like some of the other archetypes, they kind of go off of too many concepts. Some of the S-Force monsters banish, them, uh, banish cards from your hand to apply their effects, but most of the cards in here actually don't get any advantage from being banished. Furthermore, the column concept is cool, but you actually don't have a lot of cards that move columns, which makes this uh, not so great. Regardless though, there is more support coming out in Lightning Overdrive, which makes this archetype a little better, so it's definitely something to look forward to. Getting back in the packs, we have a Fairy Archer Ingonar, we have an Arm Dragon Lightning, a Wind Witch Chimes for our Wind Witch fun stuff, a Ojama Pink, a Digital Bug Strider, a Tribrigade Rendezvous, and a Sprint. Okay, so so far here, we still have yet to encounter the other Ultra Rare. Now I'm a little confused. Maybe we don't get all four Ultra Rares. We have Pendulum Encore, a Knight of Armor Dragon, a Ancient Warrior Saga, a Fable Marcoja, a Fable Anderith, a Dream Mirror Recap, Fabled Beaver, a Virtual Gate Zhuang Wu, the newest Fable uh, Virtual Gate Trap card, which is actually not bad, it's Extender, and a new Ritual in our Beaufort 6, or 4. Uh, it doesn't really specify. Anyway, moving on from there. We start off with a Reinforcement of the Army Troops, a Linear Equation Cannon, an Arm Dragon Lightning, a Spriggan's Rocky, another Tribrigade Kit. Now, having two, this is enough to actually play the full Tribrigade deck. I will be making an updated list thanks to that now. A Virtual Gate Drang Wu, a Stairway to Fable Realm, a Fable Beaver, and another Fable Treason. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see what else we can get. Moving on from there, we have another Fable Marcoja, a Parametaphose Melcaster, a Pendulum Encore, an S4 Showdown. Might as well put the S4 cards. And we have, oh, this is interesting. This is Ancient Warriors Rebellious Lu Fang. Okay, so this is the last Ancient Warrior support that we get for the set. And this one here is a doozy. So Lu Fang here is a unique Ancient Warriors monster. Unlike the other ones, which are based off of three different kingdoms in the Wind, Water, and Fire kingdoms, Lu Fang here is essentially a rebel, as the name implies. Lu Fang can special summon itself as long as you control the highest attacking Ancient Warrior monster, which in the given scenario where you're only playing Ancient Warriors, this means that as long as you control an Ancient Warrior monster. It comes in at 2800 attack, which is amazing, and it has the effect to destroy a card once per turn on the main phase of a monster with the highest attack. And the idea behind this card is that, essentially as part of the lore, this card serves the strongest warrior on the field. See, the unfortunate part about this card is that during the end phase, if you do not control the highest attack monster, Lu Fang changes control, which can be good or bad depending on the situation. Situation. See, Lu Fang, when he activates his destruction effect, also locks you into using only Ancient Warrior effects, which means even if you give this to your opponent, it also comes at the semi-benefit that they also can abuse it the same way without locking out of their effects. Regardless though, in terms of the Ancient Warriors archetype, this is an amazing card that lets you go first or go second on, and it's definitely something which, combined with the Tribrigades I have number 4, produces a lot of more powerful plays. It's something that I'm definitely going to do a profile on going forward. 
All right, getting back into the packs, we still have our Digital Bug Restrider, another Sprint, a Wind Witch Blizzard Bell, and a War Rock Ordeal. I'm really happy that I pulled just the, uh, the Ancient Warriors card, because the Ancient Warriors card by far is the thing I was the most looking for. It's weird, do you think I want actual archetypes, but the Ancient Warrior card honestly really does a lot for the deck. Just giving it a quick beater that like you can drop that isn't dependent on your opponent is something that's very important for the deck. We have a Parametaphose Fusion, this is a very powerful card for Metaphose. We have a Guitar... Gunnard's Duongus, I can't pronounce that one, Spriggan's Branga, Ice Breeze Refrain, a Warrock Gactos, this is the new Warrock archetype card, this one here actually supports Goki more than Warrocks, but it is something that I will like eventually try to build, even though I don't think it's very good, Breath of Acclamation, Ojama Pink, Synchro Transmission, and S4 Specimen, alright, now we're nearly done, probably I think we're three fourths through the box itself, we have our another Guitar Duangus, another Inganar, a Dogmatica Genesis, a Giga Thunder Gigaclops, a Spriggan's Watch. Okay, so this is the Spriggan's card that gets you your field spell. Oddly enough, we haven't opened any of the field spell, which is a little concerning, but this card here allows us to activate a Go, a, a golden gondola directly from our deck now if we already have the field spell however this card is actually a rota for the deck which is very powerful again this is something that makes Spriggan something to watch out for we have an arm dragon blitz a war rock orpus a tilted try this is actually a cool field spell in the idea that it essentially lets you cycle two on your draw phase it's something worth looking into and a Spriggan's blast all right Going on from there, we have a Ancient Warrior's Traverse Path, a Knight of Armor Dragon, a Heavy Metaphose Amalgam, a Paraphose Mel Caster, an Arm Dragon Thunderbolt. This is, I guess, Arm Dragon support if uh, anyone's interested in that kind of stuff. A Stairway to the Fabled Realm, a Fabled Owlbank, a Fabled Treason, and an Archfiend Staff of Despair. Alright, let's see... We're still only two ultra rares deep, and that's kind of concerning. With a Parametaphose Fusion, another S Force Showdown, a Neroy, a Reinforcement of the Army Drones, another S Force Orifice. So now we have two. Maybe we might actually build this deck. We have a Synchro Transmission, a Radiant Varusence, a Breath of Acclamation, and a Virtual Gate Zhang Wu. There's actually a lot of random one-off support in this deck. Even though the archetypes aren't very good, I honestly can say this does get breathed life into a lot of crazy archetypes. Another Spriggan's Call here. Oh, I see an Ultra. We have a Reinforcement of the Army Troops, a Spriggan's Rocky, a Steel Star Regulator, and a Dual Avatar Feet thing. Man, this card really didn't fix the deck. It's disappointing that this is an Ultra, but eh, it's something, I guess. Uh, we have a Beaufort 6, an Unclass Bear, and a Monokujaki. Uh, Mono this card's kind of interesting. It essentially lets you uh, lock your opponent out of activating any special summon monster effects while you can share an attribute with this card, and you bounce their process from your opponent at the end phase. It's supposed to work, but in an archetype that's like right now with Drytrons and Virtual World, this really doesn't do anything at the moment, but it's something definitely I think is good side decking when the format changes. So once again, dual avatar card, Neroy, an equation, there should be an ultra here. We have a Skylar and a Wind Witch Freeze Bell. So this is new Wind Witch support. Uh, this one's just another extender, something definitely that's pretty cool, but it's not something that I guess at the moment makes Wind Witch very broken on their own. Uh, when a Blast, an Unclasp, a Pedor, and another Staff of Despair. So I think at this point we've covered all four ultras, so the only thing I guess to look forward to really is the secret rare, but we still get some cool supers, I guess. A reinforcement, an armor dragon ritual, a ancient warriors, the armor dragon itself, another arm dragon thunderbolt, restrider, sprint, wind witch blizzard bell, and war rock ordeal. Alright. Going on from there, we have a Branga, that's pretty nice, a Refrain, a Marcosia, a Duongus, a White Baking. This card actually makes, for some reason, uh, Skull Servant pretty cool. Armored Dragon Blitz, another Pedor, and another Tilt to Try, as well as a Dream or Mirror Recap. Alright, so now at this point, we are three packs left here. So, well, well, four packs left with the Seeker Rare in that pack over there. Unless we don't open a Seeker Rare, and that's really bad. We have a Linear Equation Cannon, an Armed Dragon Lightning, a Spriggan's Rocky, a Dual Avatar Sendit, a Parametaphos Azaltis. Okay, so since we pulled this card, I guess it's a good time to talk about the Metaphos archetype as well.
So Metafolds obviously gets new support in this deck, uh, with the, of course, the one Pendulum Fusion monster, which has its own uses, but most importantly, it's a few things. First off, we have the pair Metafolds Melcaster. This is essentially the counterpart to Bismagear. The only difference is, unlike Bismagear, which searches your deck upon destruction, Melcaster allows you to add back from your extra deck, assuming that you just can't activate the effects of the card you add back. Essentially, it's a good way to recycle your pieces, which you can then pen to summon out, but it also has that nice benefit of just essentially being a Another way to trigger your Metaphose cards. The most important card, however, is this Parametaphose Fusion. Parametaphose Fusion here allows you to do a fusion summon with a monster on the field, but also one from your extra deck as well. This works really well with something like your Mithrilium, which benefits from bringing back Metaphose monsters when it leaves the field. See, before, when you fused with Parametaphose monsters on your field, you essentially put them back into the extra deck, making in a link based format where unfortunately pendulums coming out of the extra deck only go into the extra monster zone, making Mithrilium less good. Parametaphose Fusion essentially lets you always get a recovery back with that Metaphose Mithrillion. The interesting card also wise is this Metaphose Amagam, which is I guess the replacement for Electromite. Really doesn't do it for you, but Azalthes is very interesting as well. First off, it's a Pendulum Fusion monster, with that unique effect where if it's destroyed, it goes into the scale. While it's in the scale, if a Metaphose monster will be destroyed by any means, you can pop a card. Which means not only can you trigger with your other Metaphose cards by blowing up your Metaphose monsters, but it also works when you're opponent decides to be aggressive on you by popping them with card effects. More importantly though, because it's a pendulum monster, the odd chance where this goes into the, gets destroyed, if you don't choose to put in a scale, it goes to the extra deck, which means you can pen to summon it out again. Which is nice because when it's special summoned, you could put back two of your metaphose monsters in your extra deck to target a card on the field and destroy it, making this one of the actual nicer ways to do removal on your opponent. But yeah, the Metaphose support does have a lot of play, I think the names are more important, but I definitely want to experiment with this going forward. Anyway, wrapping up the packs here, we have that Fable Realm, another Beaver, a Treason, a Archfiend of Despair, two packs left, let's keep going and wrapping this up. We have a Giga Thunder Gigaclops, a Arm Dragon Ritual, a Genesis, a Metaphose Fusion, nice, a Constellar Catechus, if you're, uh, I guess if you're interested in playing Constellars, it's not bad, a Warrock Orpus, a Warrock Ordeal, a Blizzard Bell, and another Captain Sargus. It's weird, despite the fact that Sargus is one of the only ways that directly makes Spriggan's Explorer, you probably aren't going to play uh, that in general. We have the Heavy Metaphose Amalgam, another Melcaster, a Dual Avatar Ascendance, a Neroy, a Psychic Eraser Laser. This is the new, I guess, card that it's like a Soul Taker, just a little better, a little worse in certain cases. It's something, again, definitely to look out for. We have a Beaufort 6, a Unclassed Bear, and Mono Jukaki, and a S4 Specimen. And now, finally, the other Seeker Rare, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's see what we get out of this one. We have a Linear Equation Cannon. We have a Skyrock Skyler. A Giga Thunder Gigaclops. An Arm Dragon Ritual, and I think this should be the Seeker Rare. And we have an Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. Well, I guess since we pulled it, this might be also a good time, I guess, to talk about the Thunder Dragons. Arm Dragons, not Thunder Dragons, Arm Dragon Thunder specifically, is, I guess, the flagship, in another way, the other flagship archetype to come out of Blazy Vortex. It's also the cover card. So all the Arm Dragons work essentially as you've seen before. They level themselves up by essentially just sending monsters from your hand to the graveyard. The only difference here, unlike the original Arm Dragons, they do them immediately. So Arm Dragon level 3 can send its a monster from the hand to the graveyard to go to level 5, level 5 can go to 7, and 7 can go to 10. The nice part about these Arm Dragons is that the Arm Dragons at a higher level per se, or at any level, when they're discarded to activate a Dragon Monster effect, they do get additional effects, meaning that they're a lot more efficient than the original Arm Dragon archetype. Unfortunately though, the archetype itself isn't that powerful, but they do have a lot of lore or like anime references to the original, I guess, player, which was Chaz Princeton. And uh, whenever I build that archetype, when the archetype isn't god awful expensive, I guess I'll talk about those references. Regardless though, the rest of the pack isn't that interesting, but I guess with Oath Our Secrets let, I say that we are done for our Blazing Vortex box. And that's going to do it for our Blazing Vortex box opening. Uh, honestly, probably didn't open necessarily what I wanted, but we did open a bit of everything, and it does give me a lot of deck options going forward. I think given what we've opened, I, we're definitely probably going to build Metaphose first because it is the easiest of the things to build, especially when they come out. But going forward, we have things like Tri Brigade with the Ancient Warrior setup, or 
I guess the other way around. We have S Force when we can get all the secret roots. Thunder Dragon definitely because I think that archetype is worth showcasing, and eventually maybe a few meta decks that get support. Regardless though, my name is Tony Yang. This has been a Blazing Vortex box opening. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.